we are live hey welcome welcome hopefully everyone got notification that we are live i'm gonna check out yes people are joining back which is awesome hey everyone excited to see all of you back i think scott did such an amazing job uh it looks like we're not able to see chats from previous session which is oh uh, too bad hi again siri thank you so much uh scott did such an amazing job uh pete we have so many people here from like it's truly international uh you know summit we have someone from italy from israel from us obviously lots of people from us so like uh india i saw like i don't know probably like 30 people commented which is absolutely amazing and with that i want to introduce first uh speaker today and that is pete pete is with a company called hubdo and pete is going to talk about zapier automation zen thanks very much natalie and uh, great to hear that things are, are running really well um, my uh, note there i think says i'm in chicago usa but i'm actually sitting in copenhagen denmark so it really is an international event so what we're going to talk about today is the zapier automation zen the guy behind me relaxing is kind of where i'm coming from on this. So I'll share my screen and I'll show you what we will be looking at today. Welcome to Power Up Your HubSpot with some Zapier Automation Zen. So I just hate busy work. So I'll quickly cover why listen to me about this topic over the next 20 minutes. What's the promise of why we're here? And I'll give you three examples of Zapier automation that should give you the Zen. And I'll show you what I mean by the Zen. And we have some door prizes as well that you might like to take advantage of. So by listen to me, uh, I'm a uh, certified proposal specialist. So I'll be showing you proposals working with Bot, and we're gonna be automating some of that. Uh, I'm a HubSpot certified trainer and a HubSpot gold partner. And I, my day job is I support over 200 agencies and their clients on HubSpot and Pandadoc, and there's a lot of automation typically done with Zapier and that. So that's what I want to share with you some examples of how we do that. So what's the promise? Well, here's the Zen. The promise is, imagine this. So you wake up tomorrow, Thursday, 7 a.m., while sipping coffee, you open your email, you feel a smile spread across your face as you see the sales proposal or the contract that you sent out yesterday, it's already signed and paid, and the eight other busy work things that you have to do for admin were done automatically as soon as it was signed while you were still asleep. That's Zen. If you kind of get some feeling from that slide of, wow, wouldn't it be great if things actually worked that way? That's what I'm talking about. So let's have a look at three examples. I'll show you how to automate HubSpot without needing to upgrade to HubSpot Professional. So you might be planning to do that in future, but we'll show you what you can do today to automate apps that weren't even designed to integrate with HubSpot or, or anything, and then to automate the passing of data back into HubSpot from some of these other tools, keeping that as a single source of truth. So we're talking about Zapier, this, this tool. If you haven't used it before, let's just get some quick terminology down. Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect your favorite web apps to each other and information between them automatically. So within the Zapier world, an app is what you're moving data from and triggering from. So for example, the icon shows Facebook um, or Slack. So those are the apps. A Zap is a, a sequence of automated events. And then the trigger is how it starts. So maybe a Facebook new lead comes in, that could be the trigger to start the Zap. And then there'll be one or more actions. An action is actually doing something like creating a spreadsheet or changing the status of a deal in HubSpot. So if you have more than one action, that's a zap run. And of course, you, you can check the history to be able to see which zaps have actually run and what happened. So number one, let's look at automate HubSpot without Pro. Now, um, I'm not sure that you'd see a HubSpot person present this, but it might make sense that you want to do this in that when you upgrade to Pro, you get the automation, you get the sales sequences and, and deal stage automation if it's the CRM or marketing automation. But the price jump from starter to pro, your business might not be ready to make that jump yet. So it doesn't mean you can't automate. You can use Zapier to do a lot of automation. And the price point of Zapier, some of the things that I'll show you, you can do with Zapier free. 
or you might need to upgrade to the starter or pro versions, but still the cost of it is pretty reasonable and you can use it on HubSpot starter. So what are we gonna automate? Something simple. We have a HubSpot deal and we're gonna send off a contract like the guy that had the phone uh, that he saw his deal closed. First, you've got to send the con contract off. So that's what we're going to do as a first step as the example. Let me share my screen. And please, as we go, throw your questions into the chat window and, uh, and I'll do my best to come to those when we hit the Q&A. Share is coming up. Okay, here is my HubSpot. I'm looking at my deal pipeline and it's, uh, it's not very busy. If I look at my uh, other pipelines, I've got lots and lots of deals, uh, but we don't wanna have a, an eye chart of deals. Let's make it really simple and have just one deal. So this deal is for a company called Apple Do Consulting. It's called uh, PandaDoc for the sales team. So I wanna send out a contract for the deal. So I open up the deal and uh, if I'm using a program like PandaDoc, I can send out a contract and uh, HubSpot has a quotes feature as well. But you could do this with two. With PandaDoc, I wanna create the document and I'm gonna send that off. Now this is using the standard integration of HubSpot connecting with PandaDoc. So it gives me the opportunity to choose what template I wanna use. I'm gonna send out a, a one page sales proposal I'll send it out to Johnny Appleseed. He's the customer that's attached to the deal. So that's why I, I get to, to choose him. And we'll send that out. So this will create the, the contract, populate it from HubSpot because it brings across from the native uh, integration, brings across the data. Let's see what that looks like. One page sales proposal, and you'll see the token will populate with Apple Do Consulting, hi Johnny, et cetera, et cetera. So that contract's ready to go. Uh, I'm the guy with the phone and I'm about to head home. So I just want to send this contract off and, uh, and I'll send it via an email. So that goes off to my, my client. But I haven't got Zapier Zen yet. I've got to remember, ah, hang on, I'm gonna be in trouble if I haven't updated my deal or my sales manager is gonna be asking me what's going on with that deal. So normally in my CRM on that deal, I'd have to manually change that. I'd have to indicate that the contract has gone out because you can see the deal is still sitting in decision maker brought in. I want it to go across to contract sent. So I could manually drag that, but we, we don't wanna do that. We're gonna use Zapier to do that. This is Zapier. Let's have a look at how we would create a Zap to do that. I have one here, which is already started. It's when contract is sent, set the deal stage. So what will first be on this is the trigger. The trigger, the app is Pandadoc and trigger is a document has been sent. And I've already told it which Pandadoc account that I'm using, which is mine, and which template it is. It's that one page template that I sent out on this deal. And Zapier has found a document, but I'm gonna get the real one. I'm gonna tell Zapier, go off and see if I've sent another more recent document. Because that, the one that's there, the example is from two hours ago. So it's found a new document and you can see it's called Apple Do Consulting Pandadoc for the sales team. That is the deal that I've just done. So Zapier can see the contents of that document that's gone out. There's a lot of information can be used. And in fact, it even knows what HubSpot deal ID it is. And that's really important because we're gonna automate the next stage. Let's continue on. So that's the trigger. Let's create an action. So the action, Zapier connects to hundreds of different applications. And one of those, uh, of course, is HubSpot. So let's automate what we wanna do in HubSpot. We want to update a deal. 
and we'll use the information that Zapier has already learned from that Pandadoc contract. So I'll tell it which HubSpot that I'm working in. We're building this live. This is a live demo, so like things can go wrong, right? Fingers crossed they're not going to. So we want to update the deal, and we, we know that we can get the deal ID. Let's grab that from Andadoc. It's there. It's this HubSpot deal ID. So Zapier knows which deal to go into HubSpot and change. And I want to change its, uh, I don't want to change the pipeline. I want to keep it in the sales pipeline, but I want to change the, the deal stage so that people don't have to drag deals to the next stage anymore. Uh, we know the contract was sent, so we're going to set it to contract sent. And that's all I want to change. So I'll just hit continue. And when I push test, we'll get a confirmation that Zapier has gone into HubSpot, found that deal, changed the deal into contract sent as the status. So we've got a green confirmation there. Let's go have a look and see, did it work? Well, back here, I just need to refresh my screen. And it should move from con uh, decision maker brought in. Hey, it's okay, it's in contract sent. So that happened uh, automatically by Zapier. And if I go in and switch that zap on, on the top right, it's currently off, switch that on, I will never need to manually change that deal status anymore. As soon as contract has been sent using that particular template, the deal is going to move across. So I've got a little bit of Zapier automations in already from having done that. Okay, that's number one. Let's look at number two, automate apps not designed to integrate with HubSpot. So we know that the uh, the automation is uh, been handled by Zap. Sorry, we're jumping to number two. We've done number one. So number two is uh, automate apps not designed to integrate with HubSpot. How do we do that? If you think of an app that uh, maybe has no integration at all, maybe it just triggers off an email. So I'm going to give you one example. Uh, here's a real life one. I've been using these electric cars in Copenhagen. Amazing. You just use your phone, you unlock the car, you jump in and you go. And then afterwards you get an email to say, hey, here's an overview of your latest trip. So I like to log those trips to tally up uh, what sort of value I'm getting, how many trips I'm doing. So I'm using a tool which is Email Parser by Zapier. It means that I just automatically forward that email to the Email Parser and it interprets it. I've taught the parser what's on that email and this is what I do with it. I use the Email Parser as the trigger and then it runs a zap and that zap only does one thing for me today and that is it logs an entry over in a spreadsheet. So this is what it looks like. You go to pass.zapier.com and in there you set up a mailbox. So I've created a mailbox. This is all included in Zapier. Uh, so I've created one called Green Mobility and in there you see there's a bunch of emails that it's been processing and then I can pick that up in, uh, in Zapier and log those entries in a spreadsheet. We're short on time. So I'll show you very quickly what that looks like. Here it is. It's actually on and live. So that, that's a functioning zap that is already running. And it's only got two steps in it. It's got the trigger, which is a new email came in to that box. And then it goes off to Google Sheets and uh, creates an extra spreadsheet row, just putting the information from the email into that spreadsheet like that um, automatically. I don't have to manually go uh, pasting that around. That would be a pain. So that's a little bit more Zapier Zen. And we want uh, one more dose of Zapier Zen. Because by the way, I've used a Google Sheet there, but it could put that data into HubSpot. It could put it into anywhere. Let's have a look at number three, pass data to and from HubSpot. We want to do one thing, which is uh, when that contract is signed, uh, the promise is that everything's going to be done automatically. So uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. What we're going to do is create a new zap. And 
We want the trigger to be when that contract is signed. But we need to sign it, actually. So uh, over in Pandadoc, it's going to be very tight to do in the, uh, in the time available. Here's the contract. We want that signed. So I need to quickly sign that. as Johnny. Let me, uh, let me quickly do that. So I'm just opening the uh, Pandadoc document as if I was Johnny. And I'm going to sign that off. I start and just click the signature accept and sign, and I'm clicking the date, today's date, accept and sign, and it's done. So let's go to Zapier. And look. A trigger event is when a document is completed. Remember the, uh, the guy with the mobile phone, he's still asleep. This is being uh, signed during the night, and we want the systems to recognize and, and do everything that's needed. So the template, we want this app to look for any of those uh, one-page proposals coming back in. We'll test the trigger. It should see that there's one completed because we just did one. So there's Pandadoc for the sales team. That has been completed this time. So it's very similar to what it was sent, but uh, this time it's been completed and we've detected that. So now we want to update HubSpot again because we want to move some data into HubSpot. We want to update that deal. Contract has been signed. We're choosing our HubSpot hub. Can we get this in before the clock ticks over? We, we know the deal ID. We want to mark that as in out, still in the same pipeline but its contract is complete. Closed in one. Uh, and I was going to pass the, uh, the value back into HubSpot as well. I think we're going to be short on time to do that, but I could add the, the deal value of what was signed off, of what the customer agreed to, and uh, let's hit it because uh, that's the final test. We uh, get a green light here, and it's done. Let's go back. The guy with a mobile phone is still up. Refresh the screen. And it's closed in one. And if we transfer the value in there, we'd see that as well. So. Uh, we could automatically create a base camp. We could do all of the admin tasks in that zap. We just switch that. And from then on, every time a contract is signed, the work will be done. So um, Natalie, just to wrap up then, we've delivered on the promise of a bit of Zapier automation Zen. When the contract is signed and paid, the admin tasks are taken care of. And I mentioned the door prize in that I've, I've allocated three Pandadoc seats worth $267 each because they run for a whole length of three months. So for somebody who wants to be able to do with their uh, HubSpot, even HubSpot Starter, and what I've shown there to streamline and automate, uh, you could do everything that I've showed you, even with the free version of Zapier, So, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I know we're at, out of time. So uh, Natalie, I'll, uh, I'll keep my line open. 
That was absolutely amazing, Pete. Thank you so much. I see that there's a lot of comments there, a lot of questions. So if you want to um, actually, Adam, I am going to try and invite you to stage because you had a couple of questions there. So I know it's kind of a very unexpected, but hey, we love interaction here. So if you can, we would love to have you join us here live. Otherwise, hey, totally fine. We don't want to stress you out. But there are a couple of questions. Can we automatically create a follow up on task in HubSpot through Zapier when the deal has reached a certain stage? Yes, absolutely. You would trigger off the deal stage and then you would create a HubSpot engagement is what it's called in Zapier. You create an engagement. In that case, the engagement is a task, but it could be a calendar entry or a note to something else. Uh, so you create a, a task and you assign it to the right person and uh, Zapier would do that for you. Very good. How are you storing the HubSpot deal company and contact ID in the Panda doc so that you can reference it? Great. So that's a good question because there's ways to do that. I was using the native integration there. So because I created it from the deal, automatically all the metadata of the contact company and deal were embedded. I didn't need to do that. I just picked it out of the uh, Pandadoc data. It was inserted for me. If I used Zapier to automatically send the contract, I would add that in as metadata at the end. Zapier gives you extra metadata you can add. So I would make sure I add the HubSpot deal ID so when that document comes back in, I know which deal it relates to. Great demo. Thank you, Pete. Uh, Martha is saying, I wonder if we can do the same thing with DocuSign. Would, be, would it be possible to populate a template contract and follow its stages? Uh, well, DocuSign, uh, um, the functionality is a little bit different because DocuSign is mostly about a, a fairly fixed template and getting it signed off, uh, whereas with um, uh, you've got a lot of tokens that you can pass across from HubSpot into Pandadoc, but principle the principle is still the same. Yes, you can automate the same kind of flow uh, as long as Zapier has connectors for the triggers and the actions, and uh, you just got to work with what's there with Zapier. You can't kind of expand on that within the Zapier tool. You'd have to use another tool for that, like Integromat, for example. But Zapier, Zapier makes it easy. Awesome. Well, Pete, thank you so much for offering the ways here. I see that Adam was saying I'm still in PJ, so I'm going to pass on the opportunity of being <laughs> on the stage. It was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I know that you actually recently had a, a, a grandchild, right? So how, how, is, how is it going? I'm, I'm loving being a grandfather in Denmark. Thank you. That is why I'm here. And they don't call you grandpa in Denmark. I'm the father of the mother, so I am more far which I love that. It doesn't sound old. In fact, it sounds like something from Lord of the Rings. So I'm <laughs> love loving that. It. Thank you so much, Pete. And everyone, we will see you in session. Thanks. And I'll go and answer these questions uh, in the chat. See you, Thank everyone. You so Cheers.